Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Telford Reeking Council Planning Committee. This evening's meeting is held in public to ensure all those involved or interested in the plan applications can see and hear how the decisions are made. It's important that the speaker are able to present their information without interruption and that the council members of the committee are able to hear and consider the material presented. Only those people who have been notified to speak are able to speak. I would ask everyone else to remain quiet, not to interrupt the meeting, and to allow the members to make their decisions. And I would remind everyone that council meetings can be photographed or recorded and ask all participants to recognise the importance of the planning process. And please can everybody silence or turn off their mobile phones. Thank you. Welcome, Gemma. Yes, Item one on the agenda, apologies for absence. Yes, Thank you. Item two, a declaration of interest. Item of the committee. No? Thank you. Item three, minutes of the previous meeting. Are there a true and correct record? Yes, Chair. It's been moved, seconded. All those in favour, please show. Thank you. Unanimous. Deferred or withdrawn application, item four. There are none. Not non withdrawn. Item five is site visits. Uh, non scheduled as yet, Chair. Thank you. Item six is the terms of reference, and over to the solicitor for that one. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm presenting a report today in relation to this committee's terms of reference. Um, the Council's constitution requires that full Council agrees at its annual meeting terms of reference for each committee to enable the Council's business to function effectively. At the, at the Council's annual meeting on the 19th of May 2022, all Council delegated authority to each committee to review its own terms of reference. Uh, the terms of reference are part of the Constitution and the Constitution was approved by full Council on the 19th of May 2022. Um, the terms of reference for this committee are attached to your report, at Appendix 1, and your recommendation is to approve the, those terms of reference. Done every year. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Any? Formally moved, Chairman. Formally moved. Seconded. Is that agreed? Thank you. There's no change to the word of previous years, actually. No, no. <laughs> Item seven then is the plan application for determination. I intend to take them in this order. Uh, paragraph seven one, site of Cheswell Grange Farm, Cheswell Drive. Paragraph 7.3, um, it's the Granville landfill site. And finally, item 3 will be 7.2. I'll do them in that order. Okay. Oops. Site of Cheswell Grange on it's Appendix B on page 15. Sorry, I missed something out. No, I haven't. 15, okay. Who's kicking? Katie, yep. Thank you, Chair. Yes. Thank you, Chair. So, this application proposes a solar farm over a 36 hectare site. The site would contain arrays of solar panels surrounded by security fencing and CCTV with additional landscaping. The substation and battery transformers would be accommodated within the existing farmyard buildings at Cheswell Grange. Access would be via Kinnersley Drive and highway widening works are proposed along the track leading to the site to facilitate vehicles. The site is within the rural area but does not have any special landscape designations, although the Weald Moors strategic landscape is situated approximately 300 metres to the west. There are no objections to statutory consultees and the application is recommended for approval. Thank you, Chair. A list of speakers for this one. Councillor David Shaw, please, from the Parish Council. I, I, thank you. I'll be as quick as I can. Uh, my thoughts as a grumpy old resident of Lillishall, uh, yeah, but you know what Lillishall folk are like, 
uh, was initially this is this isn't right and why here however my view changed when I read a resident's letter to the parish council which was supportive of the scheme and the important part of the letter was I read was when we explained the proposal to our nine-year-old granddaughter she became very excited about the project and lectured us on the need for alternative energy now that sort of hit home for me being reminded of the importance of alternative energy by a nine-year-old set off my set me off on a totally different line. And this scheme, quite simply, is a mat is not a matter of here and now. It's a matter of the f our future. It is about the protection of livelihoods of future generations, and the protection needs to be in place before problems arise. Now, I know it's a global problem, but we can do our bit. The, the need for action has been reinforced recently by the current situation in Eastern Europe, which has resulted in a major disruption to fuel and energy supplies at a time when we have totally inadequate alternatives to, to, in place to offset this. Back at home, the Twitch, Twitch Hill Solar Farm has aroused a, a, a little bit of opposition and raised concerns, including the loss of agricultural land. It should be noted that the fields which make up the solar farm are currently used for grazing and this can, can continue whilst the solar panels are in place so there's no, no real loss. Consequently, in, in the continued use of, of the land plus the proposed landscape and mitigation measures within the proposal should address most people's concerns. Looking on the positive side as well, Twitch Hill does provide us with an opportunity. As a site set in a relatively remote rural uh, uh, location, it's ideal for carrying out studies, uh, along with the likes of Harper Adams and Telford and Rigi Council, to assess and resolve negative aspects of, the, of these systems and enhance the positive aspects, increase the effectiveness of this site and future sites. So that, that, that there's a way forward with this. Uh, finally, on a personal level, uh, a major positive is that a once grumpy old resident, who I'm sure you know who he is, will be proud to know that Lewisville Parish will be a carbon neutral parish. But for this, we need the solar farm at Twitch Hill. I think we'd all like to live in a, 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 a carbon neutral community, and on that basis, I would hope you support this, uh, this rather extremely positive proposal. Th thank you very much. Thank you, David. Councillor Andrew Aid, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I can assure you I'm not grumpy at all. No? Unlike the previous speaker, of course. <laughs> right, thank you, Chairman. As members can see, the size of this solar farm is huge and covers some 90 acres of agricultural land on a setting adjacent to the Wheelmore's strategic landscape area. Put into context, the solar farm will cover ground equating to around 50 football pitches for a period of up to 40 years. Now look, I totally accept the need for sustainable green energy that solar farms supply. However, to build them on agricultural land reduces food production and endangers our food security at a time when we import 60% of the food that we eat. A total of 150,000 acres of farmland will be lost to solar farms in the UK this year alone. Now that is clearly unsustainable. Importing food by air and sea has an environmental and energy cost in addition to the production of pollutants and greenhouse gases. We are simply robbing Peter to pay Paul by using up farmland in this manner. However, all that aside, it's planning guidance and policies which must be considered here. And there are a number of policies which could be legitimately used to refuse this application. Policy ER1 seeks to ensure that renewable energy development does not have an adverse effect on the landscape. Policy BE1 requires development to respond to its context and to respect the landscape. Policy B4, sections 1 and 6, uh, are not complied with, and that's uh, confirmed in this report. Policy NE7 seeks to, to protect strategic landscapes in the borough from development which will cause detrimental harm. 
Paragraph 174 of the MPPF also seeks to protect landscapes enjoying this statutory status. Even our own strategic landscape study requires us to protect the undeveloped nature of the Wealdmoors, whose character would be industrialised and eroded should this application be approved. Although the included landscape and visual impact assessment predicts no significant detrimental effect on the Wealdmoors, officers have been advised that little weight should be attached to it, and the installation of solar panels and security fencing around the perimeter would indeed have a significant impact. Finally, the application states that the fields will continue to be used for the grazing of sheep and that biodiversity will be protected, despite the possibility of 40 years of solar panels leaching various pollutants into the soil below. Now, that actually contravenes policy any one as well. However, that apart, Chairman, I would like to pay tribute to the way in which the applicant has dealt with this application, and should members be inclined to issue an approval, could I re request a condition that any landscaping and planting of semi-mature specimens, including trees, takes place prior to installation work commencing to help screen affected uh, properties? Also, could I request a further simple condition that security or any ancillary fencing is green in colour to uh, blend in with its surroundings? Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. Mr. Roger Hogben, please. You've got three minutes, Roger. Thank you. If we have learnt anything from the war in the Ukraine, it is we need to be self-sufficient in food as well as energy. As a result, we need to use agricultural fa land for producing food and industrial and brownfield sites for energy generation. This is particularly pertinent given Ursula von der Leyen's call yesterday to increase food production. This is broadly in, in line with the Council policy such as it is on renewable energy. It is implied that the development is on poor quality land, but it is noticed that the adjacent farm on the same grade of land successfully uh, grows barley, wheat and rape, three much needed crops. Much is made in the application of the scheme's green potentials but there is no attempt to establish the overall carbon footprint of the scheme which can be significant by way of manufacturing procedures, coal-fired energy, battery materials mined by children and the like. I would submit that the, part, the primary consideration should be the effects on sensitive landscape being adjacent to the, adjacent to the Weald Moors and uh, Lillishaw Hill. The applicant's Landscape visual assess impact assessment is recognised by your officers and landscape consultants as having serious shortcomings and they advise that little weight should be applied to, attached to its, its findings. It is thus surprising that the LVIA is then deemed to be fit for purpose. Given that your consultant identifies that the impact from Lillishall Hill and Quarry House are, were underestimates, a view echoed by Church Aston Parish Council, it is indeed surprising that Lillishaw Parish Council, on the casting vote of the Chair, is prepared to support proposals have, that have detrimental effects on the Southern, Sutherland Monument. Following, requ following requests by the Council for additional information from various viewpoints, the photo montages from Cheswell Hill submitted in the revised LVI are of poor quality and do not give a re realistic representation of the impacts and there is no further assessment from the Sutherland Monument. Paragraph 8.32 of the report recognises the impact from some vantage points, including Lillishaw Hill, are significant and industrial in nature. It is hard to see how this view satisfies the requirements of ER1 not to have any significant effects on landscape, heritage assets and features of historical significance and amenities. The various submissions allege that at least six policies have not been met, SP3, BE4, NE1, 2 and 7 and especially ER1. This proposal seeks to plonk an industrial power station in unspoilt rural landscape and should be rejected as in the case of Stereo and New Works. If the committee are minded not to reject the application, then there are significant shortcomings and unresolved issues, and a decision should be postponed until such time as they are resolved, including mitigation, archaeology, and heritage. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. I now have Mr. Ne ne Mr. Neil Harley and, and Mr. Phil Cookson, please, share in the three minutes. Uh, 
Good evening. I'm Neil Harley. I'm the applicant and farmer at Cheswell Grange, along with my wife Susanna, and uh, this is this is our proposal. Uh, I'll try and be brief. I can't go every over everything I would like to say, but uh, since we took over the farm six years ago, we have been moving to make the farm sustainable, not only financially but also ecologically. Uh, we've done a lot to try and remove monoculture and bring in a lot of diversity and increase a, the biodiversity. That's the main aim um, outside of running a financial, successfully financial business and this proposal does a huge amount to contribute towards that. Um, the only thing I'd like to say is when my children and grandchildren ask me about what's going to be the most important issue this century, climate change, what did you do? I want to say I tried to do something. Um, and from now I'll pass on to Phil, who's better at this. Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you've read your planning officer's report and the planning balance as per required from the National Planning Policy Framework has deduced that the benefits of the scheme outweigh uh, the harms and picking off the previous speakers then you'll see in para 8.34 uh, that regarding the strategic landscape of the wheels there is a very large tree belt that you can see uh, across the moors there and as your officers reported it's not significant impact upon that strategic landscape it's not inconsistent with nor detrimental to those uh, qualities of landscape and visual uh, associated with the strategic landscape um, the 1803 maps show that it was a lake up until medieval times uh, and post medieval times. So uh, the heritage report uh, stating there's not a requirement for any geophysical surveys would be right in terms that it's peatland. You can see that in the agricultural land classification and the geology reports. So uh, in terms of the written scheme of investigation going forward, then uh, we'll work with your heritage officer to look at the pragmatism of the old lake and the peat soils uh, and not having any Iron Age or Bronze Age or Roman settlements uh, and, and on peat soils in a former medieval lake. Um, your design guide, your planning officers state that we are in conformity with B1 to 5 and therefore ER1. Uh, the 46 percent biodiversity net gain on habitats and the 219 biodiversity net gain on hedges makes us compliant with any one and any two uh, and in terms that then the overall balance is giving you the recommendation for delegated approval uh, the screening hedgerows and belts as was explained to councillor reed and the resident of quarry hill that have spoken uh, mr harley is able to get ludlow companies that provide semi-mature trees to parkland, local amenity, local authorities out to start planting those screen hedges and belts this autumn. Thank you both. Katie, it's back to you. Can you resume your seats in the audience, please? Thank you, Chair. So some further information has been received since the publication of the report and these have been circulated to you via the written update. Um, as a result, some additional and amended conditions are proposed within the recommendation. Uh, the local plan sets out the relevant policies, um, set, excuse me, the local plan sets out through the re relevant policies the need to balance protecting the quality of the landscape and maintaining amenity for residents with the need for facilitating renewable energy and supporting lower carbon developments. And the committee report is structured to reflect this by setting out where the harms of the proposal are and crucially what their level of significance is against how these may be offset by the benefits that such a development can bring. So the recommendation before you to approve the application is based on a balanced judgment that looks at these issues holistically. I don't think there's anywhere in the report where one of the consultees has said there is no harm associated with this. It's an, an effectively an untouched agricultural landscape at the moment and there's a proposal to build something on it. So of course there's going to be change. But is that change harmful? Can it be mitigated? What are we looking at that balances that that would bring a benefit and can we accept them in the round? And that's what the report and the presentation sets out for you today. So all consultees either support the application subject to conditions or they raise no objection to it. Amongst these, the opinion of the council's landscape advisor is key in assessing the impact of the development on the visual and landscape quality of the site and its setting 
close to the Weald Moors strategic landscape area. Now, paragraph 8.26 of the report, if you wish to read along, um, it says what the overall aim of the Weald Moors strategic landscape is, which is to protect the undeveloped nature of the Weald Moors and to conserve and enhance the experience of tranquility, the traditional rural character and the landscape pattern of open fields, woodland blocks and tree-lined watercourses. So this is the key benchmark that the landscape advisor has looked at when looking at what the short, medium and long-term impacts of this development would be. He has concluded, uh, upon his own assessment, that the landscape quality, the impact would be significant in the early years. But when you look at those more medium and long-term views, that the mitigation proposed would bring it to an acceptable level that would not compromise the landscape quality to a degree that, that we couldn't tolerate. In terms of visual quality, the landscape advisor has assessed that the visual impact would not be classed as significant. He's not saying that there wouldn't be any, he's saying that it would be classed as less than significant. And in terms of the methodology for the landscape visual impact assessment, the LVIA, that is a level that he can accept with it. So for these reasons, he does not raise an objection on landscape impact grounds. Uh, as you've heard a little bit in the, uh, from the speeches, the applicant does recognise the concerns by individual residents. Has a, he had already agreed prior to today to additional planting and the planting of semi-mature specimens uh, to provide visual mitigation as quickly as possible to the properties situated in the closest proximity. What you've also just heard is that they are... Oh, I don't know if I, did Councillor Reid ask for this or did the applicant offer it, I'm not sure. But I think that they've offered to plant things before construction gets underway, which is quite a big concession for the applicant. Normally, it's something that we ask for in the first planting season or it's something when works above ground have already taken place. But in this case, he's, he recognises the concerns of residents. He's prepared to do the planting first in those appropriate locations. In terms of benefits, the site could generate around 19 megawatts of re renewable energy for up to 40 years. Uh, this would power the equivalent of more than 5,750 homes every year. It would result in an annual saving of approximately 8,150 tonnes of CO2. And this would be a positive change in terms of meeting our climate change agenda. The biodiversity net gain for the site is high, with an increase in habitat units of 46% and an increase in hedgerow units of over 200%. And species rich grassland is quite a difficult biodiversity habitat to, to enhance and recreate because of the nature of, of where the land is located. So that's an additional benefit to take into account here. Overall, the benefits arising from the proposals are considered to outweigh the harms and the application is recommended for approval, subject to the conditions set out in the written update, which includes the additional ones from today. Thank you, Chair. I'll take any questions. Katie, you talk to the committee now to Peter Scott. Thank you. May as well start. Um, Twitch Hill, who knew where that was? Uh, Anybody? No, it's strange, isn't it? You hit very close to where I live, and I've never heard the title before. But anyway, um, I went to spend a fair bit of time over there because I wanted to understand why this one is being. Um, the council want to propose this is this is accepted as opposed to new works and steerway which they were refused uh, and you can I think you can see why um, we're in a we're in a climate crisis we're in an energy energy crisis but I'm starting to think not not with just with this but generally only when it suits us you know I mean we can say I'm okay with that, but I don't really want that. And I think sometimes, and this is an, this is an occasion, we've got to start taking the energy crisis and the climate crisis seriously. I understand about the business with um, loss of agricultural land, but the actual owner is telling us, or <coughs> either directly or through this, that this is more beneficial and will be more beneficial over time. And I kind of agree with that, that it, it will work for us. I do agree with Councillor Ede's suggestion about semi-mature trees. I think that's got to go in. Because if you look around the site, there's actually very few people there that are directly affected. However, to put um, trees in place, 
to, to help with the visual aspect of it is a, a plus for residents there. I applaud the extra hedges and trees and flowers that will go in with this. Again, that's a massive improvement when all said and done. And as has been said, grazing can continue. So the argument about uh, food supply doesn't really work in this case, I don't feel. Um, it's also interesting to see that the Parish Council supports it. Whether it's by one vote or not, that's democracy. They support it. And this is the Parish Council that looks out it. across it. Now again, if you go up Lillishaw Hill, as I did the other day, just to have a look and see what it looks like, Personally, I don't find solar farms ugly anyway, and I don't think this, and dare I say it, steer away and new works, would have been all that ugly. I think this will fit in with the landscape. I agree again with the suggestion of, of everything being painted green as much as possible to sit in, but overall I think the benefits in this case do outweigh the harm <coughs> of it. And We've got to start somewhere. We'll hear about people where we, we should put them all over these industrial estates, etc. That's not happening. The government aren't saying to everyone, you must put solar panels in your, uh, on your house. No one's doing anything. So I think a time has come when we've got to start taking the energy crisis and the climate crisis much more seriously. This is a step forward. And I think the actual comments that were made originally by Councillor Shaw were absolutely spot on. I understand that some people will not want this close to them, but the benefit for the majority is massive. So I think quite, as you can probably guess by now, I'm going to support this, and I hope to see more of this kind of thing coming, including wind farms. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Anybody else? Jim? I totally agree. Um, wind farms, you go into Wales, you see them, and you, within 100 yards you can hear the turbines. You can't do that with solar panels. They're going to save a lot of things. We've lost the power station. All right, it was carbon uh, defective. These aren't. The land can still be grazed. So it's a win-win. I'm totally for it and agree with it. Thank you, Jim. Anybody else? Ian? I shall give an adverse opinion, <laughs> if I may, Chairman. That's your um, right. That's my right, yes, as you're quite right to say. Um, I have uh, reviewed the application and all the documentation, and I have a, a few concerns about the effect of this development on the. Uh, the wheeled moors um, and the inf information provided. The um, in I will point members to uh, where is it? paragraph uh, eighty-two, uh, three, eight point three two, where the the applicants provided as a. Um, LVIA assessment on the effect of this on the, the views across the area um, but the independent assessment of that um, says that the, the visual effects from Lillishall Hill and the public right of way will be consider, considered significant um, and the, the proposed development will appear noticeable and distinct even in the longer term. Not as the officer said, it'll be mitigated a lot worse, not as bad in the long term. It's even in the longer term from this Hill. And therefore, uh, recreational users will experience views of the extensive infrastructure that would detract from views from the nearby Wildmore strategic landscape. Um, we in the local plan have designated the Wildmore as a strategic landscape because of its unique nature, the flat area, the views to the horizon. This development is going to 
be an ugly blot on that and so it is in against uh, as far as I'm concerned against our policies I note that um, the uh, applicant says that the application I'll say application not the applicant uh, says that they're going to be sheep grazing I, I tried to find any examples of sheep grazing under server panels uh, using the ubiquitous tool Google and I can't find any and I thought about it the bottom of the, of the thing is going to be about a meter high so sheep are not much so, small, uh, smaller than a meter especially when they're full of um, wool I think they could be um, the sheep grazing could have actually an adverse effect on the wiring for these things and be a potential danger to residents and the sheep. So um, I, I don't believe that, that about the, the use for sheep grazing. I don't think it's going to really happen. Um, and finally, um, again, if we turn to pay, uh, paragraph 8.60, um, they And the previous paragraph, the planning system says that um, an approach is that no person has a right to a view. However, there may be a point that by virtue of the proximity, size and scale of a development, a residential property would be rendered so unattractive, unattracted as a place that planning permission should be refused. This is going to have a material effect on Chesil Grange and the surroundings of Chesil Grange. So I feel it, on balance, unlike the planning officer's balance who says give them a plan permission, I feel we should refuse it, Chairman. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Anybody else? Bob Wellington? <coughs> Thank you. Um, I don't find the uh, unattractive. Windmills, windmills, uh, I, I've gone walk on the North, North Yorkshire Moors. I see, lo I see lots of windmills. I, I don't find that they distract from the other beauty around. I, I go um, to the seaside and I, and I, see, I go up on the Wirral and I see lots of these uh, wind turbines. I, I don't find them unattractive. Um, there's something new. I think we, we sometimes have a, uh, a reaction to something new. I wonder what people in the gorge thought when they first built the Iron Bridge. I reckon they thought that was ugly and uh, should be put, shouldn't be in there. Let's pull it down. The, the new bridge that goes across further down, it's been there, what, 10, 12 years now. People objected to that because it would block the view of the Iron Bridge. You could see it from the Iron Bridge. And now that fits in nicely. I, I think we have a fear of something new. I, I, and I, I, I like what the African said about it for his children, his grandchildren, and another gentleman who talked about his, his granddaughters. I've got my two granddaughters staying with me for this week, and they're always talking about the planet, what's going to be there for them. No, I, I think we have to accept what's going to be there. Jane? Yeah. Um, oh, well, I'm going to come at it from a different angle altogether. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I suppose I'm a little bit concerned that, uh, that something that I'm sure the applicant would know would be probably a contentious issue. It, they didn't appear to have respected the residential visual amenity assessment for a number of the neighbouring properties because it does mention a number of those properties. Now this is where the semi-mature tree planting obviously could benefit these people but that I would have thought or hoped that, that um, the applicant would have taken that into consideration um, before it came to committee. The other issue that I have majorly is that there are so many contradictions in this landscape visual impact assessment and the types of, well, I shall say, the plan that came to base this upon and for us to actually challenge and see the differences that it shows. I mean, it, 
some of it is is really poor. Um, our own officers have have commented on this that they don't agree with those opinions. These are people that we respect what they say. Um, well, I would hope that we do generally that they're there for a reason, um, and we do have to accept that some of their findings, the Telford and Wrekin Council's build heritage, they disagreed with the findings that there wouldn't be an impact on that. Um, and it's considered that the document itself was a fit for purpose on those points, but it should be given little weight, um, should be attached to the findings of it. Now, if we're gonna get poor um, plans going forward that have actually got something that just supports that application with these contentious issues I think we you know we need to sort of put a message out that we expect better in a sense that you know it's not just about oh well I'll just offer you know this the uh, to offset the carbon emissions that that's the issue that I have so it flies in the face in a sense of um, our own policies are highlighted by our officers because they're, con you know, there's a contradiction in terms that they, you know, they don't comply with our policies, but that's okay because we can offset a carbon emission. So that's sort of the issue that I have. Um, it probably isn't hastily put together, but it would appear that you know there's little regard for the setting, the quality of the supporting documents I don't feel are there and should be, and obviously the impacts that's going to come with that. Um, I would also like to pick up on, I, the, 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 um, I think the, what Councillor Eve said, the semi-mature specimen trees would be a move in the right direction, obviously, if it gets accepted tonight. But there's also another point that I wanted to raise that was raised in that following report, and that is the um, runoff um, of rainwater and the potential this has to impact the possible borehole um, water and the contamination that might cause. I think there is a possible condition that could be put on that if it's agreed. So I, I do get a little bit frustrated when we see plans, when they can be actually torn apart. and. You know, we do expect. I personally expect better. I haven't quite made my mind up whether I can agree with it or not. There's some improvements could be made, have been suggested, um, but you know, we simply shouldn't be agreeing something for the sake of it. Called it. You got. And you Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, I've been doing this for a. Uh, number of years now the plans board and I think this is uh, the biggest uh, you know, the, uh, application we had uh, you know for a while uh, as long as I can remember it and uh, what is it uh, 98 was or whatever it is uh, you know for some it could be a, a beautiful thing the others a lot on the land or whatever you can call it and uh, of course if there is a one house next to it and then there is a people who's going to benefit further down the uh, down the road or further down the town. It's, uh, you know, the, sometimes the need of the one outweighs the need of, of the many, as they say. So, you know, it, it is uh, something that I've, I've been sort of looking at it and thinking about it since I read it this afternoon. And what struck me was uh, it's a temporary period of 40 years. I mean, normally when I think about the temporary, you're looking at about five or six years. I don't think I'm going to be around in 40 years' time. Mm -hmm. Really, a sort of like liked it or was impressed by it was a uh, you know some of the the safeguards uh, that has been put in here. Uh, you know, the, uh, for instance, uh, to include 3.5 uh, meter new hydro plants. Mm -hmm. 20 meter adjacent to woodland belt and to enhance the wildlife corridors, enhance the habitat for the farmland and woodland and so on. So I, I, when I was uh, looking at it and I thought, you know, where's a neg negative on it, that one? And then of course there is a, a Lilyshell Parish Council, they're, they're all in favour of it. And then there's a land, you know, being
seeded with flowers and a rich meadow and will continue to be grazed. The question I want to ask Katie is uh, that sheep uh, grazing, can that be done or uh, uh, Councillor Fletcher raised that issue? Uh, uh, you know, is there any example around the country where you can have these uh, solar farms and the sheep so the cows can graze and move freely and do whatever they want within that? So can you clarify that for me, please? Over to you, Katie. Okay. Tempted to go back there, members. Thank you very much. Um, I'll start with the sheep grazing briefly. There are examples around the country of where it has been done. Um, I'm not an expert in it, personally. I know it has been done. What I would say to members is that there are a lot of biodiversity-related benefits associated with this proposal. And if it were to turn out that it was not suitable for sheep grazing, would that matter alone mean that the other biodiversity benefits were not enough in themselves? I would suggest that there's still a lot weighing in favour of it in that respect. Um, from the supporting information, I am aware that the applicant's intention at the end of the four years is that it will return back as part of the farmland. Um, there was some supporting information that said due to the use of the agricultural land over a period of time, it's now in a position where they need to give the land a break to be able to make good use out of it in the future. So logic says to me that if that's the applicant's intention further down the line, whether it's for animal grazing or whether it's for growing arable crops, they're not going to do anything now that's going to cause it damage in the future because they have a much longer term vision for this than just the 40 years of solar production that we're talking about now. So yes, there are examples of sheep grazing around the country. Um, if it was going to damage the land in any way, I don't think the applicant would do it, but I think we need to defer to them and trust them in this respect in terms of what it's good for on the land. Uh, some key concerns there about the what has been said about the LVIA in the document, and you're quite right, a number of the consultees picked up that the supporting information that was submitted, they didn't agree with. So that was the, uh, the archaeology information, the, the heritage assessment and the, and the landscape assessment as well. So all three of those consultees came to a similar conclusion which said we don't agree with their findings because the applicant's team found that it was a very low or, or no significant impact in terms of you know, what the development would create. Our consultees have assessed that separately and said, well, you're saying that, but we don't agree. We think it would be significant, or in the case of consulate heritage especially, Heritage has quite a, has one criteria with a broad range in it, which is they have greater than substantial harm, which not many developments make that cut, and then they have the less than substantial harm. And when they talk about that, they have to talk about the spectrum where it's at the lower end of that, or the upper end of that, or somewhere in the middle. So even though less than substantial harm sounds quite severe, they have to talk about where it is on that spectrum and they say it's at the lower end of that spectrum. So they've all assessed it independently and said we don't agree that it's not significant, we don't agree that there's no impact, we think there is some impact and that's what they have attempted to say in all their comments in this. Um, incidentally, you know, from going through this, we are aware that solar farms are quite new to all of us. We're all learning to deal with them and what the impacts are. We are aware that there's more guidance we can perhaps give app applicants in terms of what we expect to see. And that is something we've been talking with the landscape about, particularly so how can we help applicants to give us the best submissions that they can. So it is part of a, an area of learning and growth for all of us. So does that help allay some of the concerns over the LVIA? Yes. yes, if I could come back on that, I think that would be a way forward because personally, you know, the, these are substantial and I know we've used, seen the word temporary, but you know, 40 years is, is you know, part of a person's lifetime effectively. So we are looking at a substantial amount of time to agree this and, you know, these, they could be better. And I think it's up to us as a, a, a planning authority to set the bar that we would require this, this and this. And I think it's quite right what you've come back with, Katie. That's why I'm concerned that there are too many conflicting issues here coming back from officers who, you know, we give weight to, 
um, and, and what they've actually picked up on. So we should give that um, their comments weight, however, not a great deal for the visual impact. It's not the be all and end all, but I think it would, you know, help in the future. This this time, though, I think with uh, some of those issues outstanding and a number of other conditions that could be put in place, I will probably be voting against tonight. Thank you, Jane. Jane, do you anything else, Fred? Uh, yes, you've heard about concerns about the impact, uh, the, the effect on the wheeled moors. Uh, I might get Tom to go to some of the presentation in a moment. That snapped you out of it, didn't it, Tom? <laughs> um, so you can see from the landscape plan up there, the wheeled moors is to the west of this plan. So you've got the, the very thick green buffer there, um, which is part of the boundary in the fee planting, everything to the west. That's where the wheeled moor starts, about 300 metres at that, in that direction. You can see on the other side of the site, where you can get solar arrays, you've got the public right of way that goes up towards um, Cheswold Grange from Kinnersley Drive. I don't know if you can see it at the distance the way that you are. It's a sort of square zigzag. If you can, can you make that out on the plan? It's also obviously in your, in your pack as well. Um, that is the point from where the solar arrays would have the most impact at the moment. So you're actually looking towards the wheeled moors rather than out of the wheeled moors. Tom, can we just go through some of the photographs, please? Because I've got some photos from, uh, I guess they're sitting on top of Little Hill. There are some from the Keep Going, and we've got some taken from the public right of way. Keep going. Okay, here we go. So this is standing on the public right of way, looking towards the Weald Moors. The Weald Moors starts on the other side of that tree belt. So that tree belt marks the green buffer that I've just highlighted on the landscape plan. Now, as you can see, if you're having solar arrays here and they're encased with green fencing and they've got hedging and landscaping around them, it is going to have a noticeable significant visual impact on that. That's what the landscape advisor is referring to uh, in, the, in the paragraph, I think it was 8.32, wasn't it? So yeah, it is going to be noticeable, it is going to be significant. Um, if you want to flick through some of the other ones, Tom, these are all taken from the public right of way. Um, this is where the biggest impact of it will happen but it's being mitigated for as much as it can be with the planting. There's quite a substantial buffer in between where you see the fence line there and then where the solar arrays actually start. So there's a lot of buffering inside the site as well to really set that away. And I think the height that's proposed for the planting is four metres for the hedging at the moment. The trees will ultimately grow to be much more substantial than that. So I'd say these are from the north looking down towards the site. So yes, it is going to be a noticeable change, but it's being mitigated for as much as it can be. I think that is, I think that's covered everything that I noted down. Yeah, are there any other issues okay. that uh, members wanted me to address? That any other comments from the committee? Just a question. Yeah, um, the improvements to Kinnity Drive, do we know what they're going to be specifically? The widening. Yes. Mean? So there's going to be some widening at the access. I mean, particularly, this is mainly for the six monthly construction period. That's when the most activity takes place. And then the decommissioning at the end, that's more about six months as well. So there's going to be some widening uh, for the access mouth as part of that. Um, most of that has been conditioned. There's a bit of a widening to the track as well. As you can see, the right of way goes from Kinsley Drive up towards Cheswell Grange. At the moment, it doesn't go any further than that. Than that. Um, there's going to be some widening to the track to make sure that you can facilitate the vehicles going up and down. But we're not talking articulated vehicles, it's, it's more, more vans and that sort of thing. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I mean, again, you, go, you drive along Kennedy Drive particularly, yeah. not the greatest of drives to go along no. really, it needs a lot of work on it anyway. Oh. Well, I just, just one point I will make is that for my decision on this, nothing at all influenced me more than actually going and looking at this whole area. If you do that, you get a different perspective than reading this and looking at photographs. It really does, it is not going to be <coughs> anywhere near as severe as people might want us to think it is. And that's why I think, that's why I go to every one of these to have a look, and this one particularly helped me understand the actual application better. Thank you. Any other comments from the committee? Cool, good. Uh, Jim. Before I uh, move the recommendation, can I remind uh, uh, that there were two conditions Andrew Reid mentioned. 
the two conditions he said if we do approve of it. Yes, there was a request for the planting of semi-mature specimens, which I think is already in the written update anyway, yes. as yeah. well as phasing to have planted before construction what we can. So the applicant sort of said they're happy to have that conversation and work out what can be planted before construction begins. Then there was a condition for uh, the fencing to be green and I think that was it, yes. Planting prior to installation and fencing and other paraphernalia to be green where it's going to be visible. So we will take that. Yes, the details of, of materials is part of the recommendation. Um, the applicant hasn't confirmed it yet, but I dare say they would be willing to go along with the green materials. Yeah. Okay. okay. Jim? Sorry. Oh, no. My other comment is whether we do or not, what we've got to think about. By 2030, they want to start. The government wants to stop fuel vehicles. If we're going all on electric, where's the power coming from? They're shutting power stations. So, you know, that answers the other question: How do you, or are we going back to push bikes and walking? <laughs> so, I move that we go forward. Uh, Corey, you move the recommendations. I second it. We move and second it. All those in favour of the recommendations, please show. Any against? Two against. So that's gone through. Okay, thank you. Subject to the conditions, of course, Katie. Right, thank you. That's allowed then. We now move to another contentious one on page 99. This is the Granville Landfill, Grange Lane, Red Hill. That's 2022 0170. That's, that's you, yes. Yep. That's Mark doing this one. Uh, thank you, Chair. So this application relates to the existing Granville, Granville landfill uh, located within the uh, Donington and Mixton Parish on the eastern border of the borough. The application seeks a variation of conditions 6 and 13b of the existing planning consent for the landfill, reference W2006-0232. In respect of condition 6, it's proposed to vary the uh, period in which the landfill can dispose waste uh, for a further period of five years, up to 2030, uh, with the existing consent allowing this until 2025. Um, in respect to condition 13b, it's proposed to reduce the upper limit to the amount of waste and soils that can be brought into the site from 1,500 tonnes to 1,350 on any single day, so a reduction of 10%. For the avoidance of doubt, it is not proposed to make any other variations to the landfill site as part of this application. The scope and area of the landfill remain unchanged, including the site, site contours, the type of waste permitted, and the amount of waste permitted in a calendar year, and indeed the final restoration scheme. Since the publication of the committee report, one additional representation has been received, noting a series of, of observations. Namely, firstly, there is no local need from the beginning of 2017, Telford and Rekin have successfully recycled and incinerated all mu municipal waste from this area. 0% went to landfill, proving there is no local need um, or need relating to Telford and Rekin local plan. In response, it should be noted that there is no requirement within the existing landfill consent that waste um, to the landfill should come from Telford. This matter is um, clarified um, within the committee report. Landfills remain a strategic resource and the operation itself is accepted under the environmental permit. Secondly, Human Rights Act 1998. During the period 2017 to 2019, when the EA and Environment Agency granted a license to Potters of Welsh Ball, um, residents note were advised, um, state that they were advised by the planning department that the Granville site was closed. 
and that it is an infringement of the Human Rights Act, which states everyone has the right to respect for his private and family life, his home and his correspondence. In response, whilst the site was closed for that period, this does not remove the consent which remained extant for its particular land use. The site operator will have required an environmental uh, permit to operate from the site. Thirdly, consider that local residents would have claimed for loss of value on their properties, which were purchased on the basis of assurances given by the council that the landfill would remain closed. In response, loss of value is not a material planning consideration and no evidence has been supported to support this view. Fourth, government waste guidelines. All guidelines with regard to waste strategies and hierarchies place landfill at the bottom of the pyramid and the focus is on recycling and incineration. In response, whilst acknowledging this, landfill sites still remain an important part of the hierarchy. As per the local plan, new landfill sites are still acceptable in principle, where it can be demonstrated um, no other option available. The Bletchley case, as referenced within the report to committee, is a clear demonstration in recent case law dated um, December 2021 of this continued requirement. Finally, contouring of the site. Stated it is unlawful that further discussion discussions and planning applications cannot be made between the applicant and the local planning authority regarding the recontouring of the site. It is unlawful to state that the land raised needs to be filled um, with as much rubbish as possible to comply with the existing contouring plan as set out by CETA, um, the operators, um, in 2006 when the waste industry has evolved and moved away from the landfill. In final response, the report does not indicate that such dis discussions cannot be made, rather that it is a matter for the applicant and may have clear viability issues. It should, however, be noted that it would be a breach of the planning consent were the landfill not completed and remediated as permitted. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. We now have a list of speakers. Adrian Lawrence. <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, evening Chair and thank you Members. Uh, Muxton is one of our wards which has got the most amount of residential development uh, and I ask you to consider if this was a new applicant and a new application in a residential area for a, what is a land rise rather than a landfill, would you be granting consent for it? Now I, I think you'd say no and residents would agree with you in that respect because they feel that this has never been an appropriate location for this type of large-scale commercial um, eyesore of a facility. If we have to have one of these in the borough, it should be an area in an area away from you know, the residential intensity that we have. Um, residents, I understand the point about you know loss of value of houses, but I'll give you an example. I moved to Muxton 25 years ago. And outside of my window was C2, C3, Greenfield site. And I inquired with the council before I bought the house what the future for that land was. And I was told it was in the development plan and the development area. So I bought the house understanding that, accepting that. And sure enough, in time, it was built on. I wasn't happy with it, but I knew that was the case. Whereas here, we have residents buying properties, reaching out to the council through their solicitors and through their inquiries to see what the future is of this site and being told that it ends in 25 the Granville Park is going to extend it's going to be re, re countrified and returned back to nature and that future is the other way around so they've had an expectation that that isn't going to be there in the future and now they're very disappointed to see an application that comes in that says there's going to be another five years of it and of course everybody immediately says well why, what's going to be different in five years? There's going to be another application. It's a commercial business. Of course, they're going to want to extend and extend and extend. So if we grant this, we're setting a precedent that extensions are possible. Residents don't want the development. They've suffered the development, understood that it's a legacy and, and you know we've got it now, but they don't want it to continue beyond the sell-by date that everybody bought into of 25. They want it returned to residential development, or returned to, you know, nat natural development. Um, Peter Scott made a very good point 
about the environmental crisis we have. The there's a you know we declared a, a, an environmental emergency, um, and yet um, landfill is one of the worst w things you can do. We should be prioritising recycling. We don't need landfill. We need to get our recycling right, and we shouldn't be uh, just putting an obstacle in in front of that nationally. Um, and I think that's. The, the the main the main gist of it residents um, would really ask you not to agree to this and you know support that they wanted they want a different future thank you thank you Adrian Cast Veronica Fletcher Thank you. Adopted Telford Local Plan 2011-2031 instituted new policies for handling waste in that it should be to reduce, reuse and recycle with any residual waste to go to waste to energy plants, increasing landfill tax impacts, commercial and industrial waste, diverting them away from landfill. 8.22 Waste management existing sites will only be considered where there is an established need. Where is that need? LPA would have taken this into consideration to their satisfaction when granting permission to cease operation by 2025. Original permission granted in 2000 exist to expire in 2025. During that time, traffic flow has increased due to house building along the routes access routes. A5 from the Lime Kim roundabout to Grange Lane due to house construction along this access route. There will be two access points onto the A5 from agreed housing developments adjacent to Grange Lane access onto the A5 which will generate further traffic movements. The proposal wishes to add a further five years of lorry movements for the extension. Why five years when there was a delay of two years, C3.4. Impact on residents of Visory Homes, Miller Homes, states, and that's 832, it would be unreasonable to refuse variation on grounds of any potential impact upon future residents. The permission for these developments was granted in full knowledge that the site would close in 2025 amended in 2008, 2.4, and that was 2016-17. Highways ref ref raised no objections as of the use of the site is already um, permitted. This expires in 2025. Therefore, the impact on the A5 and the A460, which converges on Telford Mark Roundabout and beyond, and residents and businesses was unknown in 2008. There are continuous complaints for A5 and the A4060, including yesterday regarding tailbacks and delays. Yesterday, no school traffic, half term. Miller Homes constructions to continue at least until 2030, and Vistry Homes unknown at present. The highways have not produced an up-to-date impact assessment on all roads to the Granville site. And noise and disturbances and smells and fumes, landfill unfortunately produces noises and disturbances. And I'm, I'm vermin. I know for 35 years of living in my ward, this permeates across a wide area. Vermin will travel to find food and multiplies at a vast rate and control is residents' is responsibility. Therefore, um, the Environment Agency would only be responsible for what's on site. The highways problem and all these other problems will continue and will worsen over the years, and the impact on everybody will continue to be a nightmare for all road users. And I ask you again to vote against this application. Thank you very much. Thank you, Veronica. Helen Howard, please. 
Welcome, Helen. You've got three minutes. Thank you, Chair. Councillors, it is quite clear that development is the principal point in question as your planning officers write flippantly, what's three years to seven years? To which I retort, what about policy and the two precedents set at the Granville in 2011 and 2013 when applications were refused on the basis that development would have an unacceptable effect on the character of the area, the Granville Country Park? Policy ER, this relates to this site, but only if there is an established need. It is in our Telford and Rekin local plan. Is this extension a local established need? Recycling, surely, is the most important part of the waste hierarchy, isn't it? Landfill is at the bottom of the hierarchy. Your planning officers have voiced concern about an appeal, which is why, why they want you to know about the Bletchley case study. But what they omitted to tell you is that the Bletchley site is a landfill, so water, rainwater will fill it up, whereas the Granville site is a land raise. The site can be seen or across the north and the east of the Telford and Rekin area. From the engineering point of view, so I am told to relate to you, from my husband, these are two totally different developments which cannot be compared. How much higher do you want the site to be? It's an eyesore for the surrounding community. When Potters came along in 2019 with their licence from the EA, we had to tell the planning officers what was going on because we made the phone call and asked the question. So why, and this is three years ago, were discussions not held then to discuss the contouring of the site on the basis that the waste plan back in 2006 stated that the disposal of rubbish to the land raise would cease in 2021, that's last year, and that the site would then gradually, over a period of five years, become part of the Granville Country Park. And this was because the landfill tax would then become higher than the tax for recycling and incineration. Recontouring of the site can be sorted out very easily by competent engineers and it is not a viable extent reason for an extension of five years. We want development in our area to suit local needs. The housing developments around us are preferable to rather than development with rubbish. We actually did not oppose the housing development opposite us. This application, this development, is from outside our area which com completely contradicts all the current waste hierarchy plans. Landfill should be a last resort. Recycling and incineration as carried out successfully by Viola has proven that this works in Telford and Rekin. There is no evidence of recycling and a full admittance in their submission that potters are dumping over 120,000 tonnes of household waste from Wales annually. So I appeal to you on behalf of our community and their well-being to protect us from extending this blight on the lives of the local people and to implore you to recognise that this sort of development, which once was acceptable as a local need, is now not acceptable because there is no local need. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Georgina, Georgina Daintith, please. Welcome Georgina, you've got three minutes. Thank you Chair. I'm Georgina Daintith from Walsingham Planning, working on behalf of Potter's Group who operate the site. This application seeks to vary conditions 6 and 13b of the operating consent. The site was closed between April 2017 and March 2019, during which time no waste, was dis no waste deposits were made. The operator operation permission allows an annual limit of 2,000 200,000 tonnes. It is calculated that the current site receives 120,000 tonnes per year. The consequence of closing the site in 2025 would mean that the landfill would not reach its expected capacity. This would be a significant waste of this important strategic resource in the waste hierarchy, as it would not be full. Secondly, the site would not reach the ground levels required to achieve the restoration contours already approved by the local authority and the land would not be able to be linked to the northern area of the, of the site, which has already been restored. The application has received no technical objections from your professional officers. Additionally, the Environment Agency raised no objection because the variations do not impact upon, upon the permitted permission, as the landfill activity is already permitted. 
Officers have concluded that there will be no additional traffic on the network than was originally consented and that the reduction in daily weight limit will reduce any risk of intensification of vehicle movements. The question of need has arisen in some objections. The Council, as the Waste Authority, recognised there is a continued need for waste facilities, including landfill. Support for the continued use of this facility is also given in national policy, and specifically in local policy ER7. <coughs> there have been objections raised relating to noise and odour. I would wish to highlight that my client operates under the parameters of their Environment Agency permit, which is in place to strictly control these matters. In considering residential amenity, there is a recent case law stating that matters such as noise and air quality are controlled by the Environment Agency permit, and that planning decisions should assume that these separate pollution control regimes operate effectively to address any concerns. In terms of the development plan, we wholly concur with your officer in the assessment of the proposed variations and agree they comply with the relevant pol policies. The approval of these variations would ensure this important strategic resource is maximised and that the already approved restoration plans can be fully implemented. It is with this respect that my client and I request you to follow your officer's recommendation and, and approve this application. Thank you. Thank you, Georgina. Back to you, Mark. Thanks, Joe. So the, um, the applicant, as you'll have heard, um, has provided clear and valid reasons in their request to extend the period in which the landfill um, operation can continue for an additional five-year period. The result of not allowing um, such an extension would, uh, would mean that the current operator would be unable to complete the site in accordance with the existing consent, which includes a full restoration of the site in accordance with the plans already approved by the um, local planning authority on the original application for the landfill. Concerns raised in regard to the impact upon existing and future residents are noted. However, as no changes are proposed to the operation of the site, including um, no increase in the amount of waste or changes in the types of waste permitted, there would be no additional impact and that is already um, approved. Whilst it is noted that new residential development has been approved nearby and indeed under construction, those applications were approved whilst the landfill was in operation and as such any impact including that on highway capacity has already been considered. Despite this, the applicant has agreed to a reduction in the daily limit of waste that can be imported onto the site um, on any given day by 150 tonnes. Members are reminded that operational matters of the landfill are controlled through the environment permit by the Environment Agency and are not therefore matters for consideration as part of this application. As such, there are no material changes to the existing landfill operation itself um, and noting that allowing the extension of time will ensure the satisfactory completion of the site as previously approved, it is therefore recommended that the variation of conditions 6 and 13b <coughs> Are therefore approved. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mark. Out to the committee. Called it. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mark, uh, environmental agency. I mean, we all know, uh, you know, it, it says on there in page 105, 803, uh, you know, they, they're more or less passing the buck on to us, isn't it, really, when they say, if anything to do with the uh, environmental control, uh, all this, uh, you know, nothing to do with us. Is it, where is it? Environmental agency issues an environmental permit for the site and so on, and it's for them to argue. So in other words, we have nothing to do with the, with that, and they, you know, whatever they say, uh, you know, we have no say as a committee on that one. Is that what you're saying? There's very clear roles between that Isn't of there? the Environment Agency and that of the Local Planning Authority. We cannot, they, they kind of go and ultimately have that site is operated through that license. They're, they're through. And that, that's not something for so, us to comment upon. So we can't comment and Indeed. so on, because as you know, uh, I mean, the landfill site, uh, there is a you know big hoo-ha going on Newcastle underlying for years and years and there was a you know there's some kind of a smell coming out of it and then uh, you know they, it was a, the local council said oh it's nothing to do with us all the planning environmental agency and uh, so you know they, it just I think it's still ongoing because the smell it emitted from uh, uh, the, the smell okay I, I take your point on uh, on that one there uh, my other point being that yes, there are, uh, as 
some of the people, you know, the said, the house has been built everywhere around there, you know, especially on the A5 when you go towards Canuck and, uh, and, and the smell, and not just on this side, on the other side as well on it. And uh, with this extra five years we're going to allow, uh, it's not going to make the situation worse for the, the people who's going to buy the houses out there. Can you, you know, I haven't got a house there, I live in Ketley, you know, two, three miles away. But you can just imagine, uh, you know, when something goes wrong with it there and some kind of a smell started to make, and then, then the people who paid thousands and thousands of their hard earned money. And then, you know, landfill site is a, it is a necessary evil, I would say that, you know, uh, perhaps once we filled it, uh, we can build uh, solar farms on them or something. I'm not suggesting we ought to do that. But this, there is a problem. Uh, there would be a potential problem there, wouldn't it? We don't know what we're going to dump there. Mm -hmm. And then comes two years, five years, the smell. Newcastle and the line. I think in terms of the, the, the residential kind of issue there, in terms of a lot of the development that's going on kind of within the vicinity, there is a lot of development going on. Yeah. I don't think anyone can, can dispute that. In terms of when, when those, um, when the, the, the surrounding area was allocated for, for kind of housing or kind of identified to come forward for housing, that, that was quite some kind of significant period of time ago, I covering kind of the, the, the uh, period of the, the local plan. We, as the local authority, can't kind of um, dictate when those applications um, are, are submitted to ourselves for, for consideration. Um, but we would kind of be mindful that they would likely come forward at some point, um, most likely to kind of coincide with, um, with the operation of, um, of, of the landfill. So that would have been something considered at, at that time. And in theory, these applications could have come through a number of years ago. We're at the position that they're, they're coming through kind of two and a half years um, before the kind of the current date of expiration, I suppose, of the um, of, of the landfill. But they, in theory, could have come up through two, three, three years earlier. In which case, those residential properties and the local authority had kind of considered it would have been acceptable um, for those houses to kind of be adjacent to um, to, to kind of the landfill for for a much greater period of time. We find ourselves here now, where, where is it that kind of two and a half years and, and we're being asked to consider seven and a half years. Um, I suppose that's for kind of members to, to, to kind of consider. We've, we've laid out within the uh, recommendation to, to yourselves and that we, we consider it's, it's an existing operating landfill site. Would that period of, um, additional period of time be so significant um, to to kind of cause those highway issues or noise or odor, and, and, and the recommendation is it would not. All right, thanks for that. Jane? And I, I'm calling you in, Jane. <laughs> After you, own sis. Uh, yeah, that's quite all right. Um, I'm, I'm not going to fall out about it. Um, I just wanted to pick upon the fact that the report identifies that the majority of the waste being tipped is from outside the borough. It's, it's, it's being used for a small amount of commercial um, waste from Telford, and it doesn't say how much. We've got to guess that one. But, you know, uh, we all know we've got to deal with our waste and our through landfill, if, if that's what the, the residue is after it's been through all the other processes. But, you know, I, I have to draw the line of being a dumping ground for other authorities because clearly that's what it's doing. It's being brought in. Um, it's made it quite clear in there that it's not identified any amounts, um, whereas I, I would have thought that you, they would have wanted to have shown us, you know, how strategic this is for us, um, the strategic resource for our area. Well, clearly, it's not such a huge res strategic resource for us for our use um, apparently according to the report that I've read um, in the original application it stated an end date um, and the statement was read safeguard the amenities of the area but the extension would add height we've already seen that it would add the height but that's it's already visible 
from large distances. But that would contradict, surely, the original agreement of the application. I mean, we're talking about um, other reasons for granting would be to achieve the height required to restore the contours. Um, you know, we were given an end date originally, rather than accepting that, and for one reason or another, I know we haven't built it up to that extreme, but surely that can be overcome by a variation to the original planning application to achieve the um, capping, if you like. But that's what concerns me, um, is that we're dealing with other people's waste. I mean, one of the things we've heard about tonight, the Telford and Reekin declared a climate change emergency. Yet yeah, we're being asked to add greenhouse gas emissions. I mean, um, methane is more toxic than carbon dioxide. But should we be expected to allow an impact on our targets by taking other authorities' waste and taking their, <laughs> you know, their emissions? You know, when we're trying to get ours down. So I find this a difficult one to balance. But I, I just don't. I don't believe that there's enough in that report that shows the huge benefit to us is quite detrimental to us. Thank you, Jane. Councillor Scott? Yeah, I probably will repeat a few things that Jane said in a sense because I don't remember this one coming in front of us in 2018, but if it had and I'd saw it, I'd have said no straight away because <coughs> I don't think we should be having that <coughs> film as a, anyway. But again, here we are. Not just Telford and Reekin, but the whole country, the whole world has uh, declared a climate emergency and mm. we're, again, if it, doesn't, if it suits us, we'll ignore it. I think that's wrong. Why the hell are we taking someone else's from another country? That sounds weird, doesn't it? Mm. Waste from another country is coming into this country. Waste from outside of the borough is coming into here. Not to go into landfill, to go into land hunt. It is absolutely ridiculous that we're doing it, and I'm totally against it, 100% against it. However, I can't change what's happening. This contract is running. <coughs> I understand that. I do think, though, that the detrimental effect on the local residents in that area for another five years can be and should be avoided. Now, if at the end of this, Potters can't replace it back to its former glory, then we should do it as a local authority ourselves. But what we shouldn't do is have this 120,000 tonnes, mm -hmm. try and imagine it, being taken across major roads and A roads by lorry mm -hmm. every day. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. So, sadly, I know the, the, the two conditions, as they stand, will continue. There's nothing I can do about those. Mm. But for the sake of the climate, the residents and this authority, I don't think we should have anything to do with the two that are proposed at all. I would like to refuse them. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Councillor Fletcher. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this um, debate, this landfill site um, its usage actually has a material effect on my ward as all the rubbish comes through my ward um, I've, I was looking back at the records and um, I realised I actually sat on this one back in 2006 and I I printed off an old copy of the uh, of the planning permission just to make sure what we're actually being asked to change and the one back that was uh, approved is actually was an extension to the existing landfill site and to take more rubbish and raise the profile by about two meters and then restore it afterwards so where originally it was a hole that they filled in it's now a nice mound of rubbish which is going to get bigger and bigger uh, and on the original permission it would cease taking rubbish in 2000 
hundred and fifteen, uh, and then they would restore the ground and landscape it, and it would become part of the uh, park. Um, I know the reason why the applicant is saying that um, they lost two years of uh, being able to uh, deposit rubbish on the site um, and so they, they want an extension for five years. So I did a simple calculation. They lost two years of 200,000 200, tonnes of rubbish a year which I calculate is 400,000 pounds of tons of rubbish that they weren't able to deposit. But then they want to, ne to re replace that, they claim, is they want five years of 120,000 tons of rubbish a year, which to my mind comes to 600,000 tons of rubbish in that additional five years. So what they're asking for is an extra 50% increase in the amount of rubbish they want to de deposit on this landfill site. Not replace what's lost, put in more. I think they're a bit um, I can't say what I really think about it. Now, <laughs> the original permission, revised permission that was granted was to close the site in 2025, right? The housing developments that are in very close proximity, that's the one, the Vector site, and the one, the Miller Homes, the Sustainable Urban Extension. When they granted those permissions, they would have taken into account the existing traffic at the time and they expected increase up to 2025 including the, the, the rubbish going into the landfill site and so they granted permission even though there was concerns about the highway things um, I know that the highways officer had this wonderful model which they use for doing all the calculations I don't know how often it's updated, but having seen the traffic on the A5, it's usually stationary because there's that much, and the A4640 that runs through Priorsley from M54 Junction 4 up to the line called Roundabout at the top where it joins the A5. It's also stationary at quite a few times. Due to the increase in traffic from the housing developments, not in Brosley and Prisley, but also in Muxton, as mentioned uh, by Council Lawrence. I think that the traffic assessment, uh, what was it, paragraph 3.5, says there won't be any increase in the traffic. That's quite right. There won't be any increase in the traffic going into the landfill site because it'll be the same or slightly less number of lorries. But on the surrounding roads, because of the housing developments, there is a considerable increase in traffic and that will continue right the way on to 2030 when the Miller Home Development, the sustainable urban extension, is supposed to come to completion. Um, now, looking at the report, which is very nice, the paragraph 6.9, the Environment Agency comment, this last po bullet point, we should cons give consideration to the nearby residential scheme. I don't see that the report is really doing that. What they want, what the applicant is doing, it wants to extend trundling rubbish through the adjoining housing estates, up the A4640, 
an A5 for an extra five years with an extra 50% increase in rubbish. I think this will have a detrimental effect and I would recommend that uh, because this facility is have a minimal use from Telfin Rigging, because we don't send our rubbish to landfill, we use the higher parts of it, recycle, reuse, or to waste the heat. We don't lend to landfill. This won't benefit the local area and it will continue to have rubbish going through the area for an initial five years and I think we should refuse it, Jeff. Thank you. Can I bring in this list, please? Yeah, yeah. Good evening, councillors. I'd just like to uh, just address you just on the structure of what you're being asked to approve today. So this is an application under Section 73 of Time and Country Planning Act. So what that basically means is some of the conditions in relation to an existing permission are being altered. So those two conditions that you're being asked to alter are the time for which the site can be operated and the volume of waste which is permitted to be entered into the site per day. The relevance is this, of me saying that is every, permit, every application under Section 73 is bounded by the permission that it's changing. So in this particular application, there's reference to the contouring and height. Um, that decision was made in 2006 and is not proposed to be changed today. Now, the councillor has mentioned um, fundamentally on a calculation there will be an increase in the volume of waste that will enter the site. Um, that's correct. Um, however, the contouring of the site is approved via the 2006 permission. So the operator cannot exceed what was already approved in 2006. And this permission um, that you're being asked to grant today um, requires the site to follow the restoration and contouring plan as agreed in 2006. So if it is the case that the, 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 the operator wishes to import an extra um, 200,000 tonnes of waste by Council of Fletcher's calculation, um, if they do so and it does not comply with the contouring report, contouring um, that was agreed in 2006, it would be a breach of that permission and a breach of this permission. So fundamentally, what, we're, what you're being asked to do is effectively allow the developer to reach the contouring that was agreed in 2006, and that's the context of the application. Um, the only other point I'd like to raise with you this evening is um, the spectre of an appeal on, on this matter. Um, now, you have been provided with the uh, decision in relation to Fletcher, which is a recent appeal on, not exactly the same uh, um, situation, but similar. Um, and in that decision was determined that the use of landfill still has a role to play. Um, so despite objections we might have to the use of landfill, it is something that a planning inspector will give it some weight to. Um, and in terms of the impact on residents and the housing um, developments that are under construction. Uh, they were agreed at the time the application and operating site was being operated. So the impact that you're being asked to consider in that context is the five years extra. Um, again, we've talked about this this evening already, but land use is effect effectively a combination of short, medium and long term um, effects. So in the context of the extra five years, again, that's for a matter for you to weigh up and give whatever you weight is, believe is appropriate to. Um, it must be considered in the long term that this application will actually cease, the use will cease according to um, the application that's in front of you. So just the three points, the context of the application is, a, is a, an amendment of conditions to an existing application, which creates the bound of what you're being asked to consider. Um, and the spectre of an appeal, which um, I'm not confident that the council could justify, um, um, and I'm, I'm sceptical the council could win, but obviously, again, that's a matter for yourselves. Um, and the, the context of the five-year increase in the operating time. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jazz. Jim, you were indicated to come in, were you? No. Gemma. Thanks, Chair. So, basically, we're, we can consider the time scale so we can go less than five years if we choose to as a, a committee. If that's what you're minded to do, um, yeah. but then, again, the application. So, I think I've got a couple of questions with regards to the restoration. So, when um, the initial uh, plan application was put in and finished the scheme by 2023, have they, why and which have we been delayed and they need an extension further for five years? Um, but also, if we're looking at the um, amount and volume of waste that's going into the site, so um, 8.22 uh, 8 8 refers to the local plan on our waste management facility. So to me, a local plan is to us, so tough and reaping. Um, and it also states um, the, 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 the new landfill or land raise site for extension to existing sites will only be considered where there is an established need. So to me, is there an established need to the people of Telford and Reekin when we do so well with regards to recycling? So I've always been under the impression that we didn't have landfill sites anymore because we recycled everything and everything was turned into energy. Um, obviously, I've been uh, proved wrong. Um, but obviously, from the, the people of, of Telford and Reekin, we need to consider, actually, as a planning committee, is there a Telford and Reekin need for the people of Telford and Reekin to have a landfill site for our residue waste? And again, should we be taking on other authorities' waste, which then impacts us locally? Mark, to that. In, in terms of um, the within paragraph three point seven of the uh, of the reports of the committee, um, kind of in terms of where the waste comes from and how it's processed is is um, is, is quite difficult to, to kind of um, answer. So so th it's kind of noted that potters who who operate uh, the site they are, um, currently operate a waste transfer station over in Welshpool. Um, which kind of t take the, some of the waste away and process it, and yes, that, that does come from um, our authority as well as um, several several others. In terms of some of that waste, does come back um, to us once it's been processed. Once you've taken out kind of the um, the elements that can then be used for those recycling, reuse, and, and, and other such purposes, some of it will end up coming back um, back to the authority, and it's that waste. Um, which is kind of directed to um, to the landfill. Um, as we've kind of noted, there is that kind of hierarchy in terms of um, with with kind of landfill being at the bottom of that. There's still a need for that kind of land, landfill, um, and and the landfill at Granville is is meeting that kind of demand. In terms of just to kind of go through some of the the, the other issues as well. Um, Yes, I, I kind of note the, the figures raised in terms of the, the quantity of the landfill as well, and why kind of over the, um, I think Council Fletcher, you mentioned the figure of um, 600,000 as opposed to kind of 400,000, um, which would kind of be expected kind of over the next two year period. Um, yes, you are kind of correct with those calculations, but I think it's important to note that the overall restoration of the scheme was based upon the full operation of the site so kind of meeting that annual um, kind of importation of waste to the site in the period kind of up until now it's kind of noted that they um, the operators haven't necessarily been importing the, the, the maximum amount of waste to the site which I, I suppose they, they kind of expected they would in order to m meet the um, quantity of um, waste on the site by by the end of the period by 2025 for the for the restoration so it's that under supply kind of of waste um, which kind of meets that that kind of 200,000 um, ton shortfall um, or, or kind of difference um, between the figures raised by by Councillor Fletch there um, as well um, and then just again to kind of clarify a point raised by um, by the solicitor 
I think there's kind of concern as to actually what the nature of the, the works are as well in terms of um, whether they, this application is seeking to, to kind of increase the height or the contouring of the development. Um, I, I think this may have been kind of a um, something as a result of kind of the way the, the application is worded in terms of where it seeks, where the application is worded to seek the variation of a pair of conditions um, and then it references the, the previous planning application and the description of, of works. That works within the brackets after that application reference is the application um, description back in 2006. So where that talks about the raising um, contour profile by two meters, that is something that was approved um, as part of the, the earlier application and is not under consideration as part of this application. So that was established uh, back under the, the 2006 application um, as well. So that's just, just to clarify that point. Okay, Jim? Who guarantees that the ground is only taken to that two metre height. So that the, the, the restoration is built uh, yeah, up as it's built up to. That, that is something that we as the local authority and our enforcement can kind of review um, that it is being built in the homes of that. How long, sport, sorry, how long have we been loading rubbish in there? Because over the period of time, whatever you've put in that hole, is going to have sunk. So, whatever you set that at, it's like a Chinese name, how I. It's going to increase because the volume that you put in, the weight, has pushed down. So, they're going to get their other 200,000 tons in on that limit in, thir in by 2030 because the ground sunk that much and it's always going to keep sinking. So, you can't guarantee a true figure on that ground height. I can't see that in any way, shape or form. In terms of with any kind of restoration scheme coming forward, I'm, I, I'm not kind of there to kind of program necessarily compaction rates or anything of the waste coming in. I would imagine that's something that's kind of was calculated at the outset. So the, the original application for the site was back in um, June 1998, which was um, by Shropshire County Council, so it, it goes it goes back a, a, a long, long time. In terms of the the latest application to which this variation and um, the 2006 variation um, relate, that goes back to a reference back in um, to 1994, um, which was granted back in nine, March 1995. So, in terms of the way the site's developed, as as was kind of touched upon by. Um, by, by the applicant um, when they kind of spoke, part of the site has already gone through that restoration. So we, we kind of be able to kind of monitor after a certain period of time, once they've kind of filled that site and um, kind of contoured it in accordance with that plan, it settles and um, we'd be able to kind of review whether, whether that has, was in accordance and the same with it. Has the parts that have already been filled and leveled, has that been landscaped and set or it's, is that it's still gone open to it's gone through the restoration it's gone through the restoration yeah. in part i still as i say how i do you, you take it when the ground keeps i sinking. mean in terms in terms of applications like this where any any application in any of borough throughout the country when they kind of come in with with landfill applications they have to similarly come through with restoration schemes to to ensure that kind of the the end result is is appropriate um, to, to its context and setting. So this isn't an unfamiliar situation. In those kind of authorities, and this has been other landfill sites have kind of come forward and closed and been restored appropriately. Um, so it's it's something operators are quite familiar with and, and kind of experts in their field, I suppose. An easy way to manipulate mm -hmm. Bob Wellington? Um, yeah, Matthew, we, we were talking about and under supply. So, to, if, if we agree that the um, the applicant could increase the time limit by the time it was shut, mm -hmm. it, no. it it still it would still be under supplied. So, if we if and I, I, I suggest to you that the under supplied is because of improvements in dealing with waste 
and in five, if we give them another five years, I would say to you that the improvement in dealing with waste may get even better. So if the argument is we need five years to get it to here, after those five years, if there's been an improvement in the dealing with waste, then there's going to be even less waste to go in it. And will be in a, a day, so many years' time, will they be coming back and saying, we can't reach this height, we need a, another extension, because what we find is there's so little to go at the landfill sites, we're actually never going to reach the height. I think it's important to note we're, we're looking at an extension five years beyond the, the current permitted scope, whereas in terms of to get us to the position we find ourselves in now, so we've got from 1988 to 2022, that is that 34-year um, period. So we're talking about a 34-year period resulting in a five-year extension, as opposed, to, it's likely that a, a five-year extension wouldn't have anywhere near kind of the same likely impact in terms of extension. I think what Bob is saying, though, is that if you've got given five years now and they don't reach the capacity, they come, uh, come again for another five years. Uh, uh, and we, we can't preempt the, the situation. We have to consider this application now on yeah. its own merits. Um, so we have to base that upon the information that we have in front of us now. Um, so yeah. Do you want to come back, Bob? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I just feel that the improvements in dealing with waste are getting better, so there will be less to go in. And if this company is saying now, well, we, we, we can't carry out the landscaping because we haven't got to the right heights to do what we said we would do. If that's if we accept that argument, then if we let them have five years more and they still haven't gotten there, surely we're going to have to accept their argument again. Well, we can't do this because we need more time. And it, it, how long is the extension going to go on for? And I think it was raised by Peter that if this co company can't uh, do the landscaping because they're saying it's not at the height where we said we're going to have to do it Th then it may be Telford and Regan that need to say okay you can't do it but we think for the benefit of Telford and Regan and our residents we, we will do that uh, I think there's an important point there that why is there a, an under supply and I put it to you it's because the ways dealing with waste are getting better and better so there's actually less to go in there and that, that that's going to come down so are we saying the amount of years they can have to fill it can go up um, and my other point I think with it was is what's good for Telford and Rekin not what's good for Mr Potter Thank you Bob Jane then Peter yeah. then Ian and then I've got to have the solicitor in Thank you Can I ask the solicitor I wanted to point a clarification because all of these, um, there was an extension granted in March 2008 on the original varia uh, on the original application. All of these are extensions. They're all varying the condition. So when we talk about varying the condition of the console, that can't be done. Um, in terms of varying the, the console, <coughs> because what you would, you couldn't do that via a section 73 application because it's, it is the description of the application. And so fundamentally, because the, the application is described as having a two metre uh, console, um, that's fixed, basically. So fundamentally, if the, if the operator wanted to undertake a console that was different to that two metres, they'd have to put in a fresh application because it would be different. they could still do it, is what I'm trying to yes. get at. Yes. It's not impossible no. to achieve. And I just wanted a point of clarification. We're hearing about we haven't got to the height because of the two years that they weren't able to operate. Why? No, no one's actually said why it wasn't used. Why the site didn't operate for those yeah. two years? Um, my no, 17. I would be honest and say I do not entirely. It doesn't say why. No. And I just thought it was a bit strange. That it was a choice, it was a commercial choice not to use it. So that's really not our fault, is it? Well, they're looking that up, Jane. Peter, do you want to make a point? Thank you. Uh, yeah, because I, I expected that the Bletchley um, appeal would be waived after this as a 
frankly a threat I feel because you feel to yourself why do I bother why is this in front of me because if you refuse it we're being told don't and, and I think that's that's a bit frightening really we should be able to have an opinion however the question is and I don't suppose you can answer it is there sh is there nowhere in Powys or in the Welsh pool area or within a 50 mile radius of Powys that can accept this waste why has it got to come to Telford and Rekin? I, I wouldn't know um, about kind of waste within uh, Paris um, or kind of the, the, the other authorities outside the um, outside of Telford it is um, it's just again go back to paragraph 3.7 which states that um, the waste is separated so it can be sent to suitable locations Telford and Rican um, is identified as a suitable location for for the residual um, waste in that case it, 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 it seems crazy, frankly. That's the sort of anyway. Fletcher? Yes, uh, so, um, this has been a lovely discussion. Uh, and one of the questions one of the clients asked is why they're extending. And uh, in fact, the uh, covering letter from the well, accompanying the uh, planning application says basically. Because they lost the two years of closure um, due to our, co our friendly COVID um, and the reduction in um, waste coming, then the amount of the capa capacity of the uh, landfill site, they will fill it up with the amount of rubbish and to unless they get this extra five years extension. But my argument is that the current permission says it closes in 2025 and by that time it should have reached a certain profile. Mm -hmm. If they're not going to be able to reach that profile, they can easily come back at, in the end of 2025 and say, we can't do it, can we change the profile? Um, and a, an application saying we're not going to put you so much rubbish in your area I think would be acceptable by this LPA though I'm not predisposing what they decide what we're asking, being asked to say is are we going to inflict five extra years of rubbish being trundled through our borough that most of it is not from our borough because our borough follows the the advised MPVF procedure recycle reuse burn to make heat and do not landfill therefore I would reluctantly have to vote against this yeah, thank you. Uh, have you got the answer to? Uh, In Jim? terms of, um, it's it's really just what uh, Councillor Fletcher just referenced. I've got a um, of yeah, no, I've got I've got I've got it here. Um, in terms of, um, it it simply kind of states that it did not operate between the period April seventeen and March nineteen, and um, there is no further rationale provided within the within the justification statement. Okay. Yes, Josh. Yeah. So, sorry, Councillor. So. I understand um, uh, council, Council's irritation, as it were, by the quoting of another no, authority's appeal this evening. Hey, I completely understand that point. The reason why it's there, though, is, is to give a little bit of context as to how these issues that you're talking about have been adjudicated very recently on. So when you're talking about um, a, a waste site that hasn't been filled because of effectively under under use per year, for example. I mean, that's the same as, as the Brexit situation. And in that situation, an inspector determined that fundamentally, it's more appropriate for the land, landfill to be filled to the point it was approved um, in whenever it was originally approved. And obviously in our case, that's 2006. So whilst, again, it's not for me to, to tell you to, you know, effectively, um, you know, 
say that what you're, the, your considerations are wrong as such, because they're not. They are com all valid considerations. The reason why I'm, I've raised the Bletchley case is because a, a great many of the issues that you're talking about were adjudicated on in that case. And um, planning inspector effectively found that waste higher waste landfill still has a, a place, part to play within uh, the waste hierarchy and it is preferable um, and it was found to be preferable in that case to allow the waste landfill site to be filled to the point that it was agreed in 2006 um, or sorry as, as originally um, approved and in our case that would be to the point that was agreed in 2006 so effectively if, if you're distilling down what, what happened in that case the inspector was basically saying Yes, it's been underfilled for, for a certain number of years, which is why you want your extension. Yes, your extension is going to cause issues for um, uh, resident residences nearby. Nevertheless, in the long term, given the need to use that landfill site to its full capacity, um, an extension in that case was found to be appropriate. Um, and that's why I raised that case, because it's something that I think you need to consider when you're weighing up this. And the only other point I'd say is waste, um, appeals, um, if if they're lost, are, are very very expensive. But that, that's just a, a point about the cost of an appeal. Uh, that is uh, doesn't concern the committee. We are here to discuss whether. It's, uh, d d I'm going to make a suggestion from the chair. There's lots of questions being asked tonight. Lots of points not really fully answered, but we understand. Can I, I'm going to suggest that we defer this so the officer can answer all the questions that have been made and all the points that have been raised. Yeah, Gemma. I, I would probably agree with that, Chair, because there's loads of outstanding things and for me, I'll probably be sitting here in 20 years' time having this conversation again um, because the, the restoration hasn't been done. Um, well, and I could probably say that because you saw me side. Um, <laughs> but um, I think, yeah, we need to defer it because there's multiple questions that we've still got. So one being, you know, they haven't moved waste for, is it 12 months? So why do we need five years would be one. Um, the impact it's going to have on residents as it goes further on, um, you know, and all the other questions that, that we've wanted um, answering tonight. So, yeah, I'll second that, Chair. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll agree with the deferment, uh, Chair, I say. Uh, you know, I mean, I had made up my mind, but uh, listening to the uh, legal advice, you, we might get into a, some some kind of a form. But he, you know, this application well, it, it won't hurt to defer it. Um, I think it would be useful to to know that we're looking at it more fully than, than we've. Uh, than there's lots of questions to be answered on this one, uh, and I think Bob Winton made the right point about extending on, extending on, extending on over years. Whatever the day, um, so it's been, I, it's been moved. I've moved this chain. It's been seconded. Yeah. Can I ask what period of deferment you're thinking of? I was thinking of deferment two months. That, yes, that's. Uh, yep. Yeah, I mean, we. I, I can't say how, how long necessarily it may take the um, the applicant to kind of gather that information and evidence. Um, I've, I've been noting the questions as we go go along, and um, it won't be till next week now that we raise it with. With the applicant, um, but yeah, it, it would come to the next okay. committee that we have the answers to the question. It's been moved and deferred, secondly, to defer. So, can I just ask, can I just clarify um, with Mark that we, it also contains details of the impact on our greenhouse gas emissions on our CO2 for our CO2 because it doesn't include uh, anything. We, we don't, you normally have a move and second of, of Sorry. something. And uh, then a lot of questions left. Sorry. But in this case, but what is it, Jim? Could I suggest we go to September because we've got the bank holiday, we've got the main holidays coming through, August. No, I, well, two months is a long enough deferment. Um, and, and we do have enough people to substitute, train people to, to come and make decisions. Uh, well, that's something that will come back when we, when we get, you, you don't want to know where some of the waste went to, I'll tell you. <laughs>
Uh, well, it's been moved and second to the defer. All those in favour deferment. Peter, you want to defer or not? He's against. <laughs> One against deferment. But it's deferred anyway. Okay? It's been a long debate. It's been a useful debate. Yep. Yeah, really good. We're giving the planning officer something to think about. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> right. Thanks, John. The, the final one is the land west of Melita, UK, Hortonwood 45. It's you. <laughs> <laughs> this application seeks full planning permission for four industrial units for use class B2 and B8 with ancillary office space, parking, service yards and landscaping. The application is presented at the committee solely on the basis that it includes financial contributions. So the site is allocated for employment purposes within the local plan, aside from the western boundary which is located within the green network and proposed to be retained for this function. The application is for B2 and B8, as I said, so use class B2 is a use of an industrial process such as manufacturing, whilst use class B8 is for the use for storage or as a distribution centre. The proposed development is speculative and the applicant is applying for 24-7 operation of all units. So since the preparation of the committee report, the applicant has submitted revised plans removing a small area of land within the southwestern corner of the site. This land falls outside of the applicant's ownership. Um, the financial contributions to biodiversity net gain remain as existing as the biodiversity mitigation on this land has been provided elsewhere on the site. So the scheme will still deliver a biodiversity net gain when considering on-site and off-site contributions together. So there are no technical objections from statutory consultees on this application. A noise assessment has been undertaken and concludes that there will be no significant noise impact uh, from the development on existing residential receptors during the day and night, subject to conditions in respect to site management measures and noise assessments to be undertaken on the installation of the occupier's plant and machinery. The noise assessment has been assessed on a worst case scenario of HGB movements as a, and has been modelled on the basis of a three and a half metre noise barrier. Um, located where the service yards face residential receptors or around the loading docks. The development would result in a biodiversity net loss on the site, however the applicant has agreed to pay an off-site contribution to the value of £41,000 to mitigate for the biodiversity net loss and on balance the council's ecologists consider this, this acceptable against policy any one subject to um, section 106 agreement. In relation to trees, the proposal involves the loss of several mature trees, albeit not veteran, including three category A trees and 13 category B. Work has been undertaken with the applicant to retain as many trees as possible, particularly around the site boundaries and between units one and two. Nevertheless, the applicant is prepared to make a financial contribution towards the off-site replacement of these trees to the value of 84,800 which would be secured through a Section 106 agreement. However, as the loss of these trees cannot be fully compensated for or replaced, policy NE2 cannot be fully satisfied and therefore members need to balance this conflict against the public benefits of the scheme. The local highway authority supports the application subject to conditions and financial contributions. As the transport assessment demonstrates a cumulative impact arising from the development, the local highway authority is seeking a financial contribution towards the strategic highway network as well as contributions towards footway and cycleway improvements. The council's heritage officer has identified that the pro proposals will cause a low level of harm to the settings of the buildings of local interest to the northwest of the site. So those are known as Queens at Horton and 6 to 9 Chapel Row as well as Chapel End. So in accordance with the National Planning Policy Framework, the decision maker needs to weigh the harm identified against the public benefits of the scheme. The applicant's intention is to deliver a net zero energy ready building to allow the incoming tenants to achieve the goal of being net zero in the future. The buildings will be delivered PV ready, so structurally they can take the PV and therefore enable the tenants to install the PV if they wish to do so. Uh, the f solar panels on the roof, sorry. 
a total of 67 electric vehicle charging points are also included across the site. So the proposals are in line with policy EC1 of the local plan, which would deliver economic benefits for the borough, whilst the green network is proposed to be retained in line with policy NE6. The appearance of the buildings would be very similar in design and scale to the development within Hortonwood and are designed to meet occupier requirements in terms of service yard lengths and eaves height. So where an application meets certain policies of the local plan but fails to comply with others, a judgment on the planning balance must be made by members. So whilst the proposal will result in the loss of some landscape features on the site, and causes a low level of harm to the heritage assets mentioned, this needs to be balanced with the economic and public benefits associated with the delivery of four industrial units on an allocated employment site. So the report recommends that on balance the application be granted subject to conditions and the section 106 agreement with contributions towards highways, ecology, trees as well as the monitoring fee and those are detailed in section 10 of the committee report. Before the committee, Peter. <laughs> you were, you were not going to let me speak then. Um, anyway, yeah. <laughs> no, it's the way you looked at me. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, we're in a position here which is similar to two we had not long ago, which, in a sense, passed into a set. There is a benefit. I mean, what we're talking about here are industrial units on an industrial estate. Shock horror, you know, we sh you shouldn't be surprised at that. Um, yeah, it's sad that trees go, but the problem is the life expectancy of these trees were sealed the moment that Horton Wood was designated uh, an industrial estate, really. You know, we're going to lose a few more. The question I've got, though, on this, with the 84,800, is there any actual plan as to where these trees will go or is it just a number which will be added to another number and at some point they'll be planted somewhere? Um, the, um, location at this stage where the contributions will go, they, the tree officers will look to plant them locally where possible then they'll look to neighbouring uh, wards and if not then they'll certainly go in, in a strategic location for the council. But at this stage we're identifying the contributions to make the proposal acceptable. Thank you, because I note that the other the same issues are raised on this as it were on the others such as the amount of litter and waste that HGV drivers mm. leave and the lack of a decent bus service and those. Those things are going to be dealt with, I'm, I'm fairly confident on that, not just with this application, but the previous one. So really, taking the trees to one side and losing them, it's pretty well a good news story, this one, so I don't see why we can mm. even think about refusing it. So I support. Jane? Hey, yeah, I just wanted to pick up on the, um, the PV mm -hmm. uh, ready building. Yeah. Um, it says there's a statement of support from the applicant. Um, I'd really like to make sure that it was conditioned because I think it's something we should do on every building now. They should mm -hmm. be PV ready but I don't want to, I don't think I'd be happy leaving it as just a statement of intent. We don't know whether that's going to happen or not if we agree it so that's a certain bonus for, for me and, and I'd, I'd like that to be included. The other one I've got is the landscape strategy plan. Um, the diagram that's shown. There's a section in it uh, on the southern boundary that shows, um, going back to the trees now, uh, trees shown as retained to be reviewed in line with the earthwork strategy. So is there a likelihood that there's going to be more taken out than, than what we've figured on? Have they been included? Yeah, yeah, I see. Um, so the, I think those are pointing towards it's specific. It's like they're going to be reviewed at a later date. So I think those are the proposed native spine road trees. Um, so I, I assume the locate the exact location of those will be determined once they 
do the utility works and and, and but they will be prior to but they yes yeah so the landscape strategy will be conditioned that's what i was going to pick up yeah. and the other thing i think we need to take into account picking up on um, peter's point on the trees and where they're likely to be planted perhaps we could put in there that they need to be semi-mature to at least make up for some of the years that we've missed from the the ecological use of the of the mature trees we've lost um, and one simple one is that having the Godman PC have raised the issue of suitable screening for residential properties. Clearly yeah. That hasn't been done to their satisfaction. So they, they did raise that early in the, in the yeah. application process. So we have worked with the applicant, applicant to place unit one, um, so as the, the building screens the residents, so the service yard will be at the front of the building um, so that in that southwest corner of the site mm. the building is providing that screening and then you've got that buffer behind um, similarly in the north there is a quite a substantial landscape buffer I think it's mm. it's at least 50 meters from that service yard to the back of those gardens and then there's bonding um, at the back of that um, so that that will provide some level of screening to the residents. Okay. Okay. Gemma? Yeah, so I think there's a, a couple of concerns with regards to the, the area itself. So it's a detrimental impact it has on residents. Um, one on noise. So the more we have within Horton Woods that's 24 seven, the more it's gonna impact on residents. So if we can get the most of what we can out of um, 106, and I think one of the concerns was about looking at further acoustic fencing for residential properties to go along but obviously we're all aware that there is different types of acoustic fencing that goes up to certain decibels I think it has to be H8 or H9 in order to have a, a decibel point up to um, I think it's 40 something decibels um, of sound there's obviously an impact on um, the highways so if that we can highways has been um, <coughs> looked at with regards to a contribution um, but we still have a lot of bottlenecks in and out of Horton Wood um, which is actually going to get worse with the amount of developments that have been agreed. Obviously we're aware that the site is for, for development of, of units but however we need to address the, the issue before we continue to, to develop and, and agree things going forward um, and then obviously the concern with planting um, the landscaping round, if we can put more and more trees around these factory units, again it'll stop the, the, the what's it, of sound um, to residential properties and I think that'll be one of, one of the points that I'd raise. Go ahead. Yeah, it says here there's 58,000 pounds towards improvement to highways, cycleways and foot, footpaths, 5,000 towards travel plan and 5,000 towards tons of traffic. Wouldn't it be best to subsidise the bus route? to cut all that out. <laughs> so the bus route is, is a private entity, occupy, uh, entity so um, yeah, at this stage, um, yeah, we, we can't ask for a contribution towards that. Um, it would ultimately yeah. be at the discretion or um, determination of, of, of the bus operator as to whether they thought there was merit um, essentially in, in having a bus um, operate through through horse and woods. Um, recently we've had a series of applications coming forward um, for horse and wood um, and it's where the kind of the cumulative impacts um, of those makes it makes it kind of worthwhile than, than kind of seeking to do that. But because it's just, it's um, as as Robin uh, case officers um, kind of touched upon they are a, a private company and it would be up to them whether they, they wish to proceed on that basis. We can't force them into it. We have transport for Delta, but we have transport for London. We should start to stop that, Bob. We should start to stop that sort of thing. Bob, you want to speak? I, I did. I wanted to go back to what Jane was saying about the, the, these pre-reads because I was going to draw out solar panels. Yeah. 
So there's a few things to come back on. So the, the applicant is a um, developer, so they're delivering these units for the tenant. Um, so structurally, they'll be able to take the, P, uh, the solar panels <coughs> if the tenant wish to do so, but they are leaving that to the, the, the tenant's discretion, uh, whoever occupies the building. Uh, we don't have a... Week? Sorry? Week? Yeah, but um, um, in our sort of local plan, we don't have a... Whilst we encourage um, solar panels and renewable energy, there isn't a stipulation to um, require them to to install them. Yes, you can, yeah. Yeah, if I could just address the committee on, on conditions. So you can only impose a condition on the planning application if it's necessary to make that development acceptable in planning terms. So what, what the office is referring to is if our local plan said that um, ultimately it's um, solar panels are ne necessary because of the, the benefit that they will provide if they're installed, then yes, you could, you could require a condition, but our local plan doesn't say that, so we can't impose it. So we can take the chance to change the plan? It can feed into the plan. Whether, yeah. you know, whether um, it would go all the way through to its conclusion, can't say, but yes, you can feed that into the plan, definitely. Okay, the recommendation will be for you. Sorry? Go on then. Oh, sorry for not lifting the I was listening to the same. Uh, we had the same discussion last month and the month before. Month before yeah. I'm before that. I'm before all that. Um, I am very unhappy about the loss of the trees, uh, especially as they're quite mature trees, but not veteran ones. Um, but there is going to be an amount to. Uh, um, I'm glad about the the supply infrastructure so that they can put solar panels on. Um, the lawyer, legal advisor to the meeting, did say that because it's not in our local plan, um, we can't in insist it is. Um, nor is it in the statutory regulations for planning which were came out recently which said we've got to have car parking um, electrical yeah. vehicle charging pointers yeah, we can we can we can, man we can mandate that those are put in place but we can't yet mandate that we can have solar panels I'm looking forward for the regulation coming that we have we can do but we can't at the moment but because the developer is going to put in the appropriate infrastructure in place that if the tenant wants to have solar panels they can fit them and connect them yeah. I'll, I'll support that so um, much against my disgust about loss of trees I move the recommendation I'll second it all those in favour of the recommendation please show with against one against can I say the local plan? If it's been revised currently, but it's been adjourned for the time being, you can feed into that. But ultimately, when it goes before the planning inspection for approval, they can alter it, and we have got no no say over that at all. But you need to feed in to the appropriate people that you would need this looking at. Okay. Thank you, Jack. Right, then. That closes the meeting.